Morning all. Now, today I've set myself the challenge of closing the loop on the Arduino PWM solar charge controller. Now, last time I had a potentiometer connected to analog A0, which has this um, connection pin on it. This time I've connected analog A1 down via a wire to the potential divider circuit, um, which can measure battery voltage. Let's have a look at the circuit. So in the PWM5, we've got battery voltage here through a potential divider, and that had on the latest version an 82K and a 20, a 20K, a uh, small capacitor to damp out noise, and then that goes into the analog to digital converter. Now I've just noticed that on this hardware, this is old hardware, it's actually uh, 1H0, so that's hardware 1.0. It was slightly different. The resistor values are different. And I don't know whether you can see right at the back there, that little blue object is a 9.1 volt Zener diode. Now, since I've gone and put the Arduino Pro Mini on this version of the hardware, then I'm gonna to have to do the maths for this on this circuit where there's a 9.1 volt Zener diode a 56K resistor and a 200K resistor. Now, the analog to digital converter will give us a value between zero and 1023, and that represents a voltage on the outside of between zero and five volts. Now, there is some debate as to whether 1023 maps to five or whether 1024 maps to five. Of course, the maths is a lot easier if 1024 maps to five, so that's what I'm gonna say. So in order to get uh, from the A to D binary value or, or integer value here to volts, we need to divide by 1024 and multiply by five. So multiply by five, divide by 1024. Now that brings us to this point here, um, the, out, the external ADC pin, but this point up here will be a higher voltage and it will be in the ratio 56 plus 200 is 256. Haha, -ha, that's a nice number. Uh, divided by 200. So let's do that. Now that actually gives us um, a scale at this point of 6.4 volts, or at least between 0 and 6.4 volts, giving us between 0 and 5 volts at the input to the ADC. But look at the numbers here. We've got 256 divided by 1024. Well, that's pretty convenient because we can cross that out, put a one, cross that out, put a four. And we've now got five over 200. That's also pretty convenient. Five can become a one and this can become 40. So that gives us a nice simple result of simply divide by 160. So whatever value we get in on the ADC, the binary integer value, if you like, we simply divide it by 160 to get the voltage at this point here. But inside the PWM5, I didn't use volts as my unit of voltage measurement. I used decivolts, or tenths of a volt. And there's a very good reason why. If I want volts, I divide by 160. If I want decivolts, I divide by 16. And that will give us a much larger number. And dividing by 16 in assembly language is actually very simple. Now I was going to show how I did this uh, in the PWM5 assembly language, but to be quite honest, I can't make head and a tail of this. But here's a divide by four. It's a uh, rotate right and another rotate right. So dividing by 16 is just four rotate rights. There's a few interesting things in here. Here's my variable called decivolts to show that I was working in uh, tenths of a volt. Uh, also here is the 6.4 volts that we calculated um, was on the lower side of the Zener diode. Now, the final part is if we are working in decivolts, in other words, if we're dividing by 16 at this point, to get the battery voltage, we then need to add on the Zener diode volt drop, which were in decivolts will be 91. So plus 91 will give us the battery voltage in decivolts. Now, if we're looking for a float voltage of 13.5 volts, um, the battery voltage will be 135 decivolts, so that's our target. 
So that's the maths. Now we need to develop um, a feedback control loop. And for this, I'm going to use my slide switch analogy. Now this slide switch has 10 positions, um, but you have to imagine that it has 256 positions. It's an enormous slide switch. And that will represent 256 different pulse lengths that the PWM generator can have. Now remember the potentiometer, as I turned the potentiometer, I changed the PWM pulse width between 0 and 255. That, that's the uh, PWM value limit. Now instead of the potentiometer, the PW, uh, sorry, the uh, Arduino PWM charge controller is now going to take control of the pulse width modulation pulse width. And it's going to do it using this slide switch analogy. So it can range from zero all the way up to 255. And the Arduino is going to take control of that value. So how's this going to work? Well, we'll start at a pulse width of zero. Now that won't switch the MOSFET on at all, so the battery will just sit at its kind of resting voltage. Uh, this one's resting at 12.5 volts. Then the Arduino will say, it will measure the battery voltage and say, is the battery voltage above or below our target of 13.5 volts? Well, obviously it's below because it's 12.5 volts. Okay, nudge the PWM value up one. Then it'll take another measurement. Is the battery voltage above or below 13.5 volts? Now this will provide a little bit of connection between the solar panel and the battery, so it may have risen up a bit, but the likelihood is it will still be below 13.5 volts. So round the loop again, nudge the PWM slider up one more. Now, when we get to sort of here, the battery voltage will probably be close to 13.5 volts. And if it goes over, then the uh, decision-making process will say, ah, well, now we're actually above our target voltage. This time we need to nudge the PWM value down one. So as the battery voltage hovers around 13.5 volts, the algorithm will be pushing the PWM up. The battery voltage will then probably rise above 13.5 volts. The algorithm will nudge the PWM value back down. The battery voltage will drop below. It'll nudge it up and it'll constantly be hovering around that 13.5 volt target. Um, and that's it. That's feedback control. That's our float voltage maintained. Now, I just wanted to check the maximum number of decivolts that can come out of this equation. It's going to be 1023 divided by 16 plus 91. 1023 divided by 16 plus 91. It's 155 effectively, so that's good. That will fit within a byte variable. And of course, 155 decivolts is 15.5 volts. So that's actually the maximum voltage that this circuit can measure, 15.5 volts. But that's fine because we're not going to take the battery over 15.5 volts at any time. Right, OK, now I've got to turn all this into Arduino C code. So back in a couple of hours. Right, here's my uh, first draft code. Um, I've got in the loop here, decivolts is analog read A1 divided by 16 plus 91. So that's what we came up with in the maths there. Then I print some stuff out, and I've got some data pouring out of the uh, system there now. Um, now, here are the decision-making instructions. If decivolts is less than... 135, uh, basically pulse width plus plus. So if the battery voltage is low, we increment the pulse width. Now we can only do that if pulse width is not 255, because unlike the slide switch, which when you hit the limit, you can't go any further, with a byte variable, if you increment something that's 255, it'll wrap round and go back to zero. So this is bounds checking. This is checking to make sure something doesn't go out of bounds. OK, here's the other one. If decivolts is greater than 135, we do a decrement of pulse width. But again, only if it's not at zero. Now, there is a third state, which is if decivolts is exactly 
one, three, five. But in that condition, we don't want to do anything anyway, because that means that we've uh, hit the target voltage. There's no need to adjust anything. So we don't even bother to check for it, because uh, if it's neither below nor above, then it must be equal to 135, and nothing happens. And then finally, uh, analog write to uh, PWM pin 9, the pulse width that we've just either incremented or decremented, or done nothing to. So, does it work? Well, sort of. It's holding the voltage uh, steady, but at the wrong voltage, it's 13 point three volts. Now it should be 13.5. Now one way to fudge this, or at least probably the error, is because of the Zener diode. These resistors are going to be accurate. The Zener diode may not be exactly 9.1 volts. And something I discovered about Zener diodes is that they're highly temperature dependent and that's why ultimately I took the Zener diode out of this circuit and got rid of it. But what we can do is use some freezer spray uh, to freeze the Zener diode and see what the effect is on the battery voltage. So here we go. So a nice cold Zener diode and the battery voltage dropped down to about 13.1. And now as the Zener diode is warming back up, that's creeping back up and that will get back to 13.3 when the Zener diode gets back to room temperature. So let's do a little fudge factor to see if we can get this to 13.5 with the Zener diode at room temperature. So my fudge there in the first line of the loop function is to change the Zener diode uh, voltage from 9.1 volts to 8.8 .8 volts. So I've put in 88 decivolts, because I'm working in decivolts. So let's uh, compile that. Watch for the FTDI to send that. It's still compiling right, that should be it. There it goes. Code is in the Arduino Pro Mini. And we're a bit high now, 13.58. Okay, so I'll just fudge that again. I'll take it from 88 up to 89 decivolts. So there's the 89 decivolts, which means 8.9 volts for our Zener voltage. And uh, well, that's a little better, 13, ooh. It's jumping around a bit, but it's pretty close to the 13.5 volt target. It's close enough, quite honestly. Um, now it's a little bit jumpy and lively. And I remember in the early days of the PWM5, I had these sorts of problems. And there are various tweaks you can do to damp it all down. Um, but I think that's not a bad first attempt. Now I'm not using a solar panel, I'm using um, an old power supply with a transformer and a rectifier and a smoothing capacitor. And they behave a little bit like solar panels. These 12 volt power supplies put out about, I don't know, 18 volts open circuit. And then when you load them up, that voltage drops. These are unregulated, of course. So that's what I use to test the PWM5s, uh, an old style power brick. So my sunshine level, I'm faking the sunshine, of course, with my transformer, is constant. But what if I introduce a small load? I've got this light bulb here. The feedback control loop should respond, um, adjusting itself to cope with the extra current that's being drawn out of the system. So let's look at the, uh, what's it called? The serial output is showing six as the pulse width, so it's very low to keep the battery at this level. Let's connect up the bulb, make sure I don't short things out. So it's slightly overshot, but it's now pulling back. So it's kind of adjusted itself to cope with that extra load. And now we shouldn't have six, and in fact we haven't, we've got 27 or 28. So the pulse width is considerably longer. The MOSFET 
in the charge controller is being turned on more, turned off less, in order to maintain the battery voltage um, with this constant current coming in from the solar panel. But now we're drawing some current out, so we need a bigger pulse width to hold the battery at um, our desired voltage, 13 and a half volts. Now let's take this off, and what we shouldn't get is too much overshoot. So take it off. So it did overshoot a bit, it got up to about 0.58, but that's settled back now down to a value which is okay. Now that overshoot could be a problem, and there are ways of uh, damping that out and eliminating it, but um, no, that seemed to behave itself quite well. Now, just finally, I wanted to show what happens when I um, attach this light bulb, like that, um, to the pulse width trace on the scope. I can't show both at the same time, unfortunately. And the sun's come out, so it's making shooting the scope quite difficult. <laughs> Let me see if I can get this lined up. Right, you can just about see that when I put the lamp on, the pulse width increases to maintain battery voltage. When I turn the lamp off, it decreases. Lamp on, pulse width increases. Lamp off, it decreases. And the battery voltage tries to hold constant. So for the moment, that's it. That's the Arduino PWM charge controller with its feedback control loop.